mine was, if you sleep around, you're going to get in trouble, you're going to be pregnant. Young men were totally ignored, and, you know, sex for them was something you got away with. Sex is something you get away with. You don't think this is true? I promise you it is true. I don't know, what you're, I don't know how far your experience, or back your experience goes, but I would respectfully suggest to you that 40 years ago it certainly was not true, it was an exception, and I would think that those of my age, my peers, would agree. So, Where do you think all the illegitimate babies came from? Where do you think all those, why do you think all those women went to England to have their babies in secret I, and have them adopted? Why do you think there were so many Irish babies being put Your rhetoric planes? will smother you if you're not careful. I mean, let's be reasonable about no, it. No, I don't think you're being logical. I, don't I, I may not be logical. logical, but I think I know what I'm talking about, and I think I'd know about the world that I grew up in just as well as what you would, and it's certainly the, 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 the norms which you are applying did not apply. I'm glad they didn't apply, and I'm very sorry that there has been a change. I think the problem there is that all our has been You know, tough. There has, there, there has been a change. Tough. There has been a change. You Look, don't have to I deal with it if you don't want to, but other people are going to have to deal with it, and you have no right to stop them. I have a right to express an opinion. Yes, you have. Yes, you have, sir. And you have done, you have, sir. And we thank the, you for the, expressing the, your the opinion. The real yes. problem about it is that we're whole, our whole discussion is becoming so condom orientated. I mean, condom is just one of the things. I think the problem is that there's been a whole situation where condoms have been re so repressed over the years yes. that now we're discussing them and they're coming out open that we're all jumping on a condom bandwagon. <laughs> it is not the only solution. It is not the first solution. The first solution is no year part, no well. Okay. It's wider than yeah. that, though. It's much wider than that. Yeah. Yes. I just accept. Uh, I, I'm, yeah. There was nothing talked about, but in fact, it showed you how to use a bloody thing. Yeah. And, you know, well, it's, if you're going to use them, it's better use no, them properly. Minute, that lady there was also saying, you know, with respect, yeah. you know, the whole tenor of your argument was the use of condoms and put a condom in your handbag and get on with it. That's, no, that, wasn't that, me. that has that wasn't been me. the whole tenor <laughs> That's of only the show that I've seen this week. Well, no, let, me, let me put something to you. I was going to show the people tonight to finish off with how to use a condom. Now, do you want me to show them or not? No, no. I can't tell you what to do, what not to do. Gail. Oh, what's, what's your correct? opinion, though? What's I would rather you wouldn't with respect. Why so? Because I don't think it's right for me or my children to see that sort of thing. Quite honestly, because I would not encourage my children to use condoms. How old are your children? One's 27, one's, tw one's down at the Trinity <laughs> Ball, would you have to believe? He's down at the Trinity Ball. 27? One's 27 and the other's 21. And you're afraid of him watching television at a quarter no, to no, midnight? Well, he's, he's, no, he's no longer with me now, he's in London. But well, what are you afraid I have of? A, I have an 18-year-old daughter that I, I wouldn't want to, to see these things. You wouldn't want your 18-year-old daughter to see a condom? I'm telling you, if she was in the sitting room last night with me, I'd have been very embarrassed. <laughs> would. would she have been embarrassed? I think she That's would have. I think she would have. Would his daughter have been embarrassed? Well, I can only talk for my daughter. She wouldn't know. But surely this is the point, that it's, yes. it's the, a lot of the embarrassment comes from the previous generation That's right. because of the conditioning that they've had. That's right. That's right. Now, I mean, in relation to the, the, the other, the mention of, about figures on unmarried pregnancies, this is a very important thing. If you actually go, go back on the reports on unma unwanted pregnancies, you find there's a considerable percentage, a minority, in which there's a lot of alcohol involved. Now, so it's not just a question of contraceptive practices, it's a question of the total health education of people to realise what drugs do to them, how young people feel when they're in love. And when people who are in love are taken over by a normal conventional form of madness in which they suspend a lot of ordinary rational decision making. And for their partners they will take risks that they will not normally take. So we've got to prepare people for life on a much broader basis than okay. just simply contraceptive practices. If I practices. show people now in an animated film how to use a condom, am I pursuing the condom mentality? If that's all you do, it's, it's too narrow. It well, may we've been still talking be useful for an hour and a half. Come on, we've said a lot of other things apart from that. What is your answer to that, Derek? What is your opinion about that? Uh, I, I think it's perfectly acceptable to show people how to use a harmless piece of rubber. I mean, uh, it's not going to bite <laughs> you. It's not going no. to do anything. No. Uh, they must know how to use it. It's their choice whether they use it or not. It's their choice whether they watch you or not. They can turn their televisions off. <laughs> yeah. They're not like magnetic. Fifty percent of the chemists in this country won't even stop condoms. Why are we all getting so excited? They're so difficult to get. You practically them. have to crawl to Dublin on your hands and knees <laughs> to get a condom. What get about you, Father? Would you be shocked if I showed people how to use a condom? Well, I saw it last night, and they kept putting it on the fingers. Yes. <laughs> walking around.
down tonight with a condom on the finger saying, it's all right, Mary, we're dead safe. Right? Right. Right. Yes. Okay. Well, then let's finish off by doing it, all right, with a shock. Okay. Let us see the dreaded object. If you're embarrassed, I'm terribly sorry. You're such a nice man, I hate to embarrass you. But a condom comes... Can't even open it now. A condom comes in a pack like that. That is the dreaded object. There it is. That's what it looks like out of the thing. People falling in a swoon all over Ireland at this moment, looking at that. Okay. If you'll pardon the expression, Roisin, would you roll it there, please? <laughs> Look at this. We might as well laugh at it because it is laughable half the time. The condom is made of rubber, whether you knew it or not. There are two main types. On the left, a condom with a teat. On the right, plain without a teat. Worn on the penis during intercourse, the condom forms a barrier between the penis and the wall of the vagina or anus. There are many brands on the market. There are two more there, fitted and with teats. You can also buy them in different colors and shapes and strengths. They all do the same job, protection against infection, and they're a contraceptive. Now, it's important not to tear or damage the condom as you take it from the packet. You take it out rolled, you put it over the top of the erect penis, and you roll it down to where the base of the penis meets the body. The condom works by catching the ejaculated sperm, preventing it from mixing with the partner's body fluids. It's essential that the condom must be put on before penetration, not halfway through intercourse, not just before ejaculation, but as soon as the penis is erect and before entry. Here again, two types on the penis. First the plain type, without a teat, and then with width. The teat, or a nearless portion of the plain condom, catches the ejaculate. That's what a condom is pretty well about. Now, there are more things, in more detail, how to put it on. You take the rolled condom, you pinch the teeth to get the air out with one hand, and you unroll the condom down to the base of the erect penis with the other. Here it is again. The air must be got out of the teeth or top of the condom so there's room for the sperm. If you don't get the air out, the condom may burst under pressure, allowing the sperm to escape. The procedure is similar for a plain condom. Pinch the top of it with one hand to leave an airless space and unroll the condom the full length of the penis. We emphasize again, leave a space for air and unroll it fully. <laughs> That's what it looked like. Nervous laughter in the audience and all that sort of thing. The penis must be erect before fitting the condom. A condom forced on a limp penis is uncomfortable and insecure. After orgasm, after orgasm, the idea is to withdraw immediately before the penis becomes limp and the condom loose. It's important when withdrawing to hold the bottom of the condom around the base of the penis to prevent spillage from the loose condom. Spillage can cause infection. You are advised strongly if you are and if you must engage in sexual activity, you are advised to follow those instructions. Now, love, what's your reaction to all of that? I'm not making fun of you. Believe me, I'm not. Yeah, I'm, um, I'm surprised and pretty shocked to tell you. You're surprised and pretty shocked. I, yeah. Disappointed. I'm a wee bit. I, ah, that's fair enough. I, okay. Um, okay. I, I felt like walking out, quite honestly, only I, I wouldn't want to embarrass you. Or to oh, you wouldn't embarrass no. me. If I can embarrass you, I can, you can no, embarrass me. No, yeah. a wee bit surprised and, hmm. and disappointed. Well, can anybody say anything to the to, to the man? Yeah. 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 Would, it, would this gentleman prefer his children to be at risk from AIDS? rather than avoid his embarrassment about condoms? Mm. Yes. Well, that's a very important question, no, quite honestly. And the point I was making that it's in five... Point. Yes, it does, but the point I was making, in five years' time, we'll have, a, we'll have an answer to it. We'll have a... a, a there's, no, there's no sign of an answer No, but there could well be. I don't mean it, but say there's ten no years' time. There's no sign of anything. But I mean, the, 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 they're spending millions of pounds and dollars towards a solution. Now, where do we go from there when we get a solution? The we, only that's the point I was making. Do we tell the kids, throw away the condoms, but continue having your sex? You're all the right. only answer we have today is information, education, knowledge, prevention is the only <coughs> cure. And that's really the serious right. aspect. This is why right. we've had to pull back these barriers mm -hmm. and be so explicit and uh, put you to this uh, awful embarrassment that we can see and sadness that we can see on your face. Mm -hmm. Well, it's, it's, we have, it there's is a price to be paid for everything. It is a matter of life and death. I would like to answer this gentleman's question about yes. rearing our children. And yes. we have struggled very hard against very hard pressures and yes. difficult circumstances to raise them to be good Christians. Yes. And we have done our utmost to do that. 
And among the pressures are all these programmes that are coming from television, from newspapers and so on. And the message that comes across is carry condoms and fornicate freely with whomever you wish and you're more or less safe. That's not true. That's that was the message true. that came from the programme last night. That is not true. It now is listen not Gay, I watched that programme last night I with so great did interest. I. So did I. And all the young people in the studio audience, yes. all the young people who had been interviewed in the streets, yes. without exception, gave that message. There wasn't one dissenter. And I thought it terribly sad that was this really representative of Irish youth. I really was bitterly disappointed. I, I, I think you can, you can say it's representative of a large number of Irish youth. But there wasn't one dissenter. And there the only... Actually. There was actually, there was actually there was one woman in the audience who I thought was great, who said, uh, I personally don't approve of people having sex before marriage. I wouldn't want to have sex outside marriage myself. But I think that people who do wish to do that should be able to protect and inform themselves. Now she said that, and as you say, was the she, a young person? she was a very brave yes. person, yes, yes, and a yes. young person, and fair well, play to her. Uh, well, as you say, that's one of the points that yeah. it takes an awful lot of courage but, yeah, for sure. young but people she was to a stand up you against no all this that is now nowhere. so fashionable. Well, well it's, you see, you're, you're, you're using words like fashionable. It, it's, well, it's it, a it is fashionable now to have casual sex. But it really is. Is. No, this isn't, no, no, no. We're, I mean, the problem is, in a certain sense, I mean, you've made history here tonight. This is actually kind Why? of, you know, Why? in terms of the candid nature of the piece of film that you've just shown and yes. dealing with it. Yes. What it shows, though, is the transition from only dealing with sexual behaviour as a private matter to recognising that now, partly because of AIDS, it is a matter of public concern. Yes. And when it becomes a matter of public concern, we cannot just afford to, to deal with the embarrassment of individuals, however painful that is. We have to bring it out in the open and we have to deal with the facts and confront them. And I think that's what's happening here and that's a very major change and a painful change but it is a vitally necessary yes. change because of the public what nature Dr. of the What Dr. Cawley is saying is it's a brutal world and you're going to have to face it. And it's, it's shocking and it's horrible and it's depressing and you wish it wouldn't be so, but that's the way life is. Can I come back to the treatment of the people who are suffering now? Uh, yeah, Father, I, I, I really Just have to go. Just for one moment, is, because it, they're the key people in the, in the thing. People who have AIDS are the only people who can, who can spread it. It can only spread from them. If the society and the community will take care of them they will take care of the society and the community and i know the drug users and they are responding but the services and the care is not responding to them they are not being given adequate care okay. the society right. needs Thank to do you. that core yes. groups we must deal with the core groups who are infected and this is, relates to all sexually transmitted diseases. You deal with the core groups, you contain the infection within the core groups, and then you can contain the infection. You deal with the community reservoir of infection. I've got to go. We've overrun outrageously. It is almost midnight. All right. Thank you very much indeed for joining us. Thank you to our panel and our many people in the audience who joined in. Nice to have you with us again. Good night until next week. God bless you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.